be. Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing, but you know that don't you, because that's why you're tuning in. And I'm joined today by legendary trainer and ex-fighter, Mark Tibbs, out in Fuerteventura in Spain. How are you doing, Mark? Lovely, Russ. Good to hear from you, mate. Nice to see you looking well. How's weather? <laughs> yeah. You all right, mate? Sorry. Yeah. How's weather out there, Mark? Is it all right? Weather's weather's been fantastic. I can't moan. Bit You're... bit windy tonight. I put a jacket on, but it's been lovely. The weather's been been, been great. You got a tan? Do you think so? I don't know. You look <laughs> like you had one other day when I see you. You're tanning up well, Mark. <laughs> Yeah, nah, it's going, it's going well out here, mate. It's going well. It's going How long well. have you been out there? I think I've been here for about uh, just over three weeks now, Russ. Yeah. Just over three weeks. And how long you got left? Um, well, he fights on the 4th of December, Billy Joe Saunders. And so I expect to be home a couple of days before we fight because uh, there's no quarantine uh, process yeah. at the moment in the Canaries. Oh, that's good then, isn't it? Yeah. All right then. Well, I've got a few questions for you, mate. Just 10 questions. Uh, I know you're busy. So I thought we'll get stuck straight in then. Yeah, and go balls deep. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean that balls deep by <laughs> anything, yeah. you know. <laughs> uh, right. Billy Joe Saunders, yeah, you've trained you trained him since you were 17. You parted. I mean, he went his own way and he's come back to you. How's he been? Well, when, when Billy Joe was 17 years old, uh, my father, Jimmy, my dad, Jimmy, actually uh, was Billy Joe's trainer. Yeah. And uh, and I was my dad's assistant at the time. Actually, that's what got me involved with uh, boxing. professional boxing. Although I had my professional boxing licence, um, I felt that um, I could assist my dad in bringing along Billy Joe career. And... Uh, and and my dad went from Southern Area title right through to the World Championship. Went so through all the levels, didn't they? Yeah, we went through every level, every le every single level, and I learned a lot along the way. And uh, yeah, so 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 that was uh, that was um, when I started really um, getting involved with professional boxing. Well, I trained a few people before then at the Peacock Gym here and now. But um, Billy Joe gave me the appetite to get involved in uh, professional boxing training. I remember when I came to see your dad a, a couple of years ago at Peacock and he said to me, I said, is Billy Joe good? And he said, he can dominate world boxing at middleweight. I said, what, why is that, Jim? And his exact words were, he don't get it. Yeah, true. And is he, still the, same? Is he still the same, Billy? He, do you know what? Since uh, I've been involved with him, uh, we're back with Bill in a couple of months now, and uh, we've done some good work before we got to Fort Ventura. Yeah. And uh, but well, I, I'm gonna say it from 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 the day we started at the Orange Gym in in Raynham, where my base is, we uh, he he knuckled down, really knuckled down, and yeah. I've only ever known Billy Joe to uh, to work serious. I mean, to all my my fighters I've trained uh, as a pro, I always bring Billy Joe up. He's uh, he's uh, worth e ethic and his seriousness because they all think he's the joker. But he's never been, um, you know, when he worked with me dad and myself, he's always been a serious player. And uh, he's never, ever messed around under our training. And so, you know, I find that hard to believe, but... It's just really, really lovely to work with a, um, a fantastic, uh, skillful, natural fighter in Billy Joe Saunders. And uh, he's a natural. And, you know, I'm going to have to back my dad up. What he says, he's uh, yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's very, very uh, hard to hit. And he's very skillful in the process. And I really think that uh, he, he's, he's, uh, he's not only a boxer, he's going to know how to fight and be confident in fighting if and when he has to fight as well as box. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because he hasn't really had a firefight yet, has he, in his career? Because he's that skillful, isn't he? Yeah, well, he's matured now. I, I think, he, you know, he's maturing. I've noticed the maturity in him. 
since uh, since since uh, we we worked with him before. Yeah. So I've noticed, you know, the real man, the real man in him, and uh, and uh, he loves to he loves to um, he likes to get stuck in to tell you the truth. But you know, he always did when he was with me dad years ago. He loved to get yeah. stuck in, but um, you know. He's uh, he, he can't take away that, that that boxing skill and fluidity and, and naturalness that he's got. He's gonna he's gonna entertain as well as bring the pain. <laughs> mm -hmm. I really believe now that he's uh, in his his later years in his career, he's really is coming together. I really feel he is. Good, good to hear. Uh, your stable mark at moment. Have you got any lads out there helping you? Well, I've got. Um, I've got a couple of guys, young James Hawley, uh, to break Billy Joe Saunders in. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, he came along, yeah. so he's uh, he, he's done a good job in in, in breaking Billy in. Uh, Charlie Duffield, I brought out. Um, he's very strong. He's a cruiser weight, light heavy. He's a he's very very strong, upright, rigid, uh, big puncher. So he's doing some some work out here with us, and uh, we've got two other guys coming on Monday. But we don't need to overdo it, you know. We know we know what we've got ahead of us, yeah. and we don't need to over um, over complicate things, you know. Billy Joe knows out the box, uh, you know. Just got to keep an eye on on. Uh, he doesn't overdo it uh, to add little things and reminding little things, and uh, hopefully he'll find new things that he's never touched on before we'll see yeah all right then uh fury caballel does it happen and is it a good fight i hope so because caballel's uh pretty avoided isn't he and uh yeah i think am i right in saying the last time i see him fight was Derek Chisora in monaco right yeah and he was very very uh he was very very slippery and uh I liked him, and uh, I feel that Tyson Fury, uh, he, although he's avoided Caballero, I think Tyson Fury, he wouldn't mind fighting him. He's the only man on the planet that that wouldn't uh, turn his back on a fighter like that. Yeah. I hope he comes. Yeah. Yeah. He uh, he did a good uh, a good number on Derek, just like Usyk, didn't he? And Derek were fresher a few years ago, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, for sure he did. He did. He done a better job than Usyk. Mm. So it's very, yeah, 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 good. Uh, all right, then, uh, Fury Joshua. Obviously, we, you want that to happen, don't we? We all do. But do you think Joshua is going to fight Pool F and then probably oh, second Dillian next year? And the Fury fight won't happen. Do you think that, Mark? There's a lot of people saying it, it could be 2022, aren't they? Now, so again, Russ, sorry, mate. There's a lot of I, people. I mean, I... Sorry, there's a lot of people saying that Fury Joshua could be 2022 because Joshua's going to go Pulef, Usek mandatory, and then probably Dillian White and let, wait while the fans come back. And it probably could be another yeah, yeah. 16, 18 months before it happens. Do you agree? Yeah, I agree. I think, uh, I think um, we all want to see um, Fury Joshua. I said, yeah. you know, every, every uh, fighting and casual fan on the on the planet wants to see that, and it'd be great if uh, we could uh, time that right so the so there's fans. You know what I mean? Yeah, For sure. Um, but they want the gate, don't they? Yeah, that'd be that'd be great. I mean, they'll hold out for that. Hopefully, I say hold out. Who knows? We thought this was going to blow over this uh, COVID thing, but yeah. it's in, is it? wait and see. We have to yeah. wait and see. But no, with the fans, that'd be a fantastic. Uh, oh, we all want to see that for sure. Yeah, yeah it's a good fight. Uh, Del Boy Usek, what do you think to fight? Yeah, well, I expected Usek to, to, to uh, well, he he, he, he he outboxed him for sure. He done well, Derek. Uh, yeah, I was pleased for Derek. He, he, he said what he was going to bring and he brought it. Yeah, um, he said what he was going to bring and he brought it. But I think uh, I think Derek needs to. Uh, he's had some good fights now. I'm not saying he should retire, and there's another fight. You know, there's fights there for him. But I hear he, I hear um, he's going to fight Dillian. Is that right again? 
Well, that's what they're hoping for today. Uh, David Hayes put statements out and doing interviews and Eddie Earn as well. And he's had Derek on and they're, they're trying to whip it up on Sky Sports for a trilogy uh, on November 21st. But I, I, I'm wondering if that might be a bit too soon after what he's just been through. He's had a seven-month camp, Chisora, hasn't he? Yeah, I think... Uh... It looks good and it'll sell and it'll be, you know, it'll be good. I think Dillian probably, you know, will do him again, uh, tell the truth, because Dillian's got that boxing element about him. Yeah. And whereas, whereas uh, Derek is just a proper, proper brawler. But uh, I'd like to see Derek have a little breather, tell the truth, and, uh, mm. you know, have a little breather till after Christmas before he thinks about fighting again. But actually, he's game, isn't he? He's a warrior. Yeah. Do you think it's a bit uh, harsh of David A to put it to want to put him out there after f- three weeks later after what he's just, or after all that, you know, all this last show and all these camp and that? Or do you think that, that it's just a business and you know he's looking yeah. out for his fighter to get him money? Or, what do you think, Mark? Uh, it might be a bit of chat. I mean, I don't know if that could happen if uh, if Povetkin's, uh contracted to to make that defense yeah. first. So. I'm not too sure about that. Um, might be just a bit of chat, you know. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's, come, it's come up. Um, Povetkin's got uh, COVID. COVID. I think there's a few other every couple more heavyweights out there queuing up to fight Dillian. Yeah. As well. Yeah, there will be. Is it's pound for pound? It's sorry, not pound for pound. It's pay per view, isn't it? <laughs> pay per view. After his last performance. Uh, I'd imagine they'll fancy it with him, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, there will be. They'll be queuing up. All right, then. Uh, let's have a look. Strength and conditioners, Mark, in boxing. Do you feel that everybody's a strength and conditioner all of a sudden? And that they've got a, they're playing a bigger role than what they should? Yeah, well, listen, strength and conditioners are, are, are all well and good. And... Uh, you know, it's like anything. There's, there's, there's levels, and there's uh, there's levels in anything you do: boxing, training, all. You know what I mean? All you know, everything we do. So you got to understand what's right for your for your uh, for your client. And uh, so, yeah, there's a place for them. There's a place for them. We've all moved on. Uh, in the sport and it, it as a as, you know the science has all moved on but it does get a bit it does wind me up at times to tell you the truth because uh, a lot of it's a lot of it's a little bit ridiculous you know they, they, they you give them a, you give them a little job to do a strength and conditioning job and then next thing you turn around they've got the pads on the body belt on they're all <laughs> over the place and they're undoing your fighters work they're undoing your fighters work you know what I mean yeah. everyone their place and uh you know I've got my place in the team and uh and everyone's got their place but uh the fighter the fighter depends how experienced he is he'll understand and know who's who around him yeah and, and that with the brain as well but yeah uh do you remember oh, you'll have heard this quote before the Peter Fury quote where you let him in, you let him into your stable and before you know where you are they're all the pads, then the wrapping, the wrapping and wraps. You've heard that one. The, wrap, the wrapping and wraps in dressing room before title fights. And he's like, What's going on here? Well, who's this guy here? Where's he come from? Who the f- is this guy? Um, no, you got, you got to keep an eye, you got to keep an eye on everything. If you, yeah, you know, if you're serious about what you're doing, you keep an eye on things anyway. You know what I mean? And, uh, and you know, to bring on board and who yeah. not to. And every now and again, we make a ricket, but you know, you just, <laughs> one slips through at night. <laughs> you don't, yeah, you don't, you don't let them in the dressing room. Yeah, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I agree. The one wouldn't have happened in your dad's day, then, Mark. Would it? There wouldn't have been no strength and conditions uh, back then with well, Frank Bruno and Chris Pyatt and all them boys. You had Michael Watson now. Yeah, nah, nah, oh, for sure. Yeah. I remember him. Remember him days, and uh, my dad was very, very. Uh, he he ran a he ran a tight ship and. Uh, regimented quite regimented yeah. it works back then you know what i mean yeah. i'm a little bit like that myself but you know as i said things have changed a little bit you've got to move with the times but you still got to not forget the basics you know what i mean i mean 
Mm. You can't make it too complicated. And uh, yeah, you want an ounce uh, of fat while they're on Chris Pyatt, Frank Bruno, Michael Watson. They never had an ounce of fat on them, did they, Mark Kayla? Did they, them boys? Did they? No, that that gym they trained in uh, in, in Canning Town in oh, E16, it's called that, the Royal Oak. Royal Oak, yeah, I remember, I remember that very, very well because, uh, you know, I spent a lot of time in there watching all those guys uh, over the years. And Terry Lawless had a he had a big gas heater, like it was built into the wall, and it was like ninety degrees every single day. They trained Monday to Friday, and they used to boil them down. You know, it was a bit it was a bit tough back then. But like you say, they was down to the they was almost down to the bone sort of thing, but. But they trained, and I guess strength and conditioning back then. I mean, I think my dad was like the trainer there, and then you had Frank Black. Uh, he was also the trainer, but he. I remember very, very clearly. Uh, it was like a process. My dad used to do the training and the coaching. Then they went round on the floor, floor work with Frank, yeah. then skipping bike, then then speedball, and. Um, Never remember. I never remember a lot of weight training back then, to tell you the truth. And in fact, they they avoided it a lot back then, uh, the weight training. But the first time I heard Frank Bruno doing weight training, he should go somewhere else and do his weight training. And Nigel Ben later on, uh, Nigel Ben actually introduced me to to weight training, and it it helped me as a as a twenty five year old. I, I liked it. It worked for me. Some people, you know, you got to. When you gel up, when you gel with a trainer and a coach and that, you, you know, you get to know you got to be spoke. What's good for the fighter? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. What's good for, for the fighter? We're all different. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the trainer will figure it out with the fighter what he needs and what he doesn't need when he needs an yeah. arm around him when he don't that kind of thing, won't he? Absolutely. The trainer, the, the head coach will would and should work it all out with the fighter as they yeah. go along. Yeah, but brilliant. Brilliant. Uh, Savannah Marshall and Peter, our, our pal, they've had some success, haven't they, this last weekend? Uh, Lovely. Peter's do, he's, he's done well with Savannah. He's changed her style, hasn't he, from day one. She was upright once, you now. She's She's got all... She's developed a, um, a good style, hasn't she, now? She could do everything. She, she's lovely. She really impressed me. She's long. She was slick. She was quick and uh, responsive. And uh, she set a lovely, lovely pace. And uh, it was really, really lovely to watch. In fact, I really enjoyed watching the way she went about her business and uh, the way she dissected and and stopped her opponent. She done it, done it great. And I could see the fury, <laughs> the fury oh, yeah. style, which was nice. Yeah, it's really, really, really nice. It worked, it worked. The head uh, movement and all, all that kind of thing that she was doing and that, yes. Yeah. Just side on. Uh, yeah, very side on, yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah, very, very nice. Very nice. And very, what very I liked nice. about it is when he told her, right, fin nip it, finish it off now. And, and she she went she went for and got her out there, didn't she? Yeah, well, it sounds like I did I did, I, I mean we was all in the in the villa here watching yeah. the fight, so a bit of chit chit chatting going on. But so Peter's basically asked her to go up, he saw the opening, yeah. set about for the kill and uh and that, that shows you the trust between the uh yeah. the boxer and the coach fantastic to hear that and i've never heard that on the night yeah we well, I, I, I heard it yeah you said i can see that i can see yeah. that now but uh she looked really good and like i said she's a she's a big lass for 160 pound and i think she beats that clarissa she, she beat her once hasn't she yeah in the amateurs oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah 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 no, i'd like to see that i'd like to see that i mean They'll get the reds together and get that and get that on. And uh, you know, looking at the other night, she's uh, she's come on wonders to to, to, yeah. to win a lot. I think she thought with a your call. Yeah, um, Dad cut my money. Was that he was? That's right. Yeah, that's what. Man, yeah, yeah. Two old school yeah. guys in corner. <laughs> yeah, he's come on since the your call fight. I remember that. Yeah. And Peter's uh, had a bit had a bit of stick because she we lost against Povetkin. Stick that I didn't agree with because she was only a babby, twenty five, isn't he? And so he stuck one up to his critics. He got another world champion under his belt. Uh, did you say Huey took a bit of stick? No, oh, Peter had had a bit of stick of uh, Huey, you know, losing against Povetkin. I've seen a bit of stick on social media. Well, Huey's, Huey's, 
Well, I think uh, hats off to Yui. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not just saying that. I mean, yeah. he went out to the Lions then uh, and took took the opportunity. Am I right in saying that he went out yeah, to Paul Gary? Yeah. yeah, he went yeah, out yeah. to Paul Gary. He got cut, didn't he, in round two? But yeah. when he fought Povetkin, a lot a lot of people were giving him a lot of stick, saying he won't throw it right hand, and they give his dad a bit more st- a bit more stick. But so I'm glad for Peter yeah. to get a world champion under his belt and say, you know, up yours. You know what yeah, I mean? Well, yeah, of course. Well, Yui's 25, isn't he? So again, Russ. Yui's 25 year old, isn't he? Or has he just turned 26? He's plenty of time. Yeah, he's young. He's a young. He's a young man, isn't he? He's like, for what he's done in his career at yeah. such a young age. I mean, that's great experience. He's not been, he's not been knocked about. He's not. Um, he's not, not been, been down. Been, not been down. No, he's not been down. He's got that experience that will only benefit him. Yeah. Benefit. In his in his late twenties, for sure. I mean, he's lucky to have you know. To, to, well, he's not lucky. He's, he took he took he took the he's grabbed it with both hands, and, and you know, and he's got yeah. great experience from it. Yeah, he's, it's only it's only going to benefit him. Yeah, I agree, mate. I agree. All right then. Uh, last, basically, just last two questions. Do you do you think that Daniel Dubar and Joe Joyce is a good fight? And do you feel that Martin Bowers don't get as as much respect as other as other trainers? You know, like your Colwells and Gallagher's and people like that. They're always in limelight. Martin Bowers seems to go under radar. I don't know what he's done with Daniel Dubar. And do you think that's a good yeah. fight, and Joyce? Yeah, they've done. Martin's done a great job with uh, with Daniel Dubar, I think, and. Uh, and uh, and that's off to both teams, in fact, to uh, take that fight. It's a, you know, it's about right. It's a good fight. Yeah. Uh, when you get up, um, that's what we want to see as fans. We want to see Joe Joyce, the old, experienced amateur at his yeah. age. Uh, you know, uh, in fact, I think he's had he's had some. I think he may have thought uh, you agree with me or not, Russ. I think he's thought the. Would you agree with me that he's fought a better opposition? Yeah, as a maybe pro? just a bit better. Yeah, yeah, I think he has. Yeah, yeah. 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 But Daniel, Daniel's a, he's a very, very sharp shooter, hard yeah. hitting, sharp shooter, yeah. and uh, so it's a, it's a, it's a lovely, lovely balance, all yeah. British fight, and it's, it's on pay per view, Mark. No, that's a, that's fantastic. That's great for the fans. I mean, that's wonderful, and uh. Big up to the both teams for getting that on and, and going back to Martin Bowers, you know, he's under the radar. He's under the radar. He does his work, does his job, gets on with it. And uh, he's passionate about what he does. I've been around Martin since I was like probably um, probably 17 years old myself, uh, maybe 20 years years old myself, something like that. I've, I've known Martin. <laughs> since late so, 80s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah You've yeah, known him a long it. time then, have you? Is he from your manor? Uh, um, Martin's a Canning Town boy. I'm, I'm, my family's a Canning Town, but I'm, I was actually brought up in East Ham, although I'm knocked about in Canning Town. They're, they're only miles away from each other. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we, we, we uh, I grew up around the Peacock Gym, really, uh, I guess, or I hung about around the Peacock Gym. And Peacock Gym was, you know, it was uh, everyday life for, 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 our, for our lot, if you know what I mean. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was nice. It was good. It's good. Yeah. All right. That last question. Uh, do you see any of the old, old school people, you know, who, you, who you've grown up with and trained with, you know, like uh, ca- old characters like Mark Kayler, Chris Pyatt, Jim McDonald, any of those boys, Frank Bruno? Do you see any of those boys? Well, well Mark Kayler, since he left for California, uh, probably 30 years ago now, I don't think How he's ever been. Yeah, it must have been about 30 years ago. But they was very good. We was all very, very good friends, the Kaylers and the Tibbs family, uh, through my dad training, Mark. Yeah. Mark Kayler and, and Pat was, uh, you know, we was all friends and they're, 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 young, they're young children, they're young lads and that. Yeah. But they moved to uh, California and very, very occasionally we, we, we contact each other through email. But um, I've got, I've got a good friend of mine that's in, in, in very good contact, mine and, and Mark's that are always speaking. So I always get uh, relayed messages from my our friend Ron. But no, Mark and Pat, so I, I, I speak to them occasionally on um, by email. Pat did come over a couple, about five years ago and we all had dinner together. But Mark's never been back 
But um, never been back once. He's never been back. Uh, I understand he's never been back once to this to you know back to the UK. So I don't know. He's uh he's settled there in 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 the US in California, and I think he's uh yeah he's he's, he's made his life there now. But um. Jimmy McDonald, uh, obviously, he's a trainer in the business. And uh, I remember Jim as a, as a young pro myself and I still see Jim. And Dean Hollington, uh, I grew up fighting with a, uh, a guy, a friend of mine called Dean Hollington. We boxed at West Ham and Repton. Yeah. And then went on to be a professional. He's, 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 he's working uh, around the boxing scene now. And, um, yeah, there's still a few few people I bump into now and that from, from, from boxing. Chris Pyer, um, I haven't seen in a long while. Uh, last time I see him, uh, it was at the country club in Epping Forest. We were both dancing to rave music. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. <laughs> <laughs> you have a good and night. Then, <laughs> a few people up on the way out. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, it was Sunday morning. <laughs> <laughs> But that's actually that was the last time I see Chris Pyatt was in the Epping Forest Country Club. But I hear he's doing, I hear he's okay. I think he's back up in Leicester. That's why I hear because I was working up in Leicester with Dillian White for a while, a couple of years ago, and um, and everyone spoke about Chris, and uh, I was hoping to see him and bump into him, but it, it never happened. Yeah, yeah. Oh, brilliant! All right, then, yeah. Mike. Well, listen, it's been a pleasure. Having you on, and I hope you're well. I hope you're enjoying it over there with Billy. I hope he's behaving. <laughs> uh, he's doing really, really well. He's oh, knuckled good. down. When everyone says to me, uh, is he behaving? Is he this? Is that? He's, he, he's been a gentleman. He's trained like I always remember him training. And yeah. we're ticking boxes, we're getting results. And uh, we're working, I'm working with uh, Greg Marriott, who's doing a wonderful job in his nutrition. Yeah. Uh, Tom is camp manager and um, we've got a nice little team but a tight team and uh, I'm happy with the way things are going Brilliant mate, well listen all the best Mark and I'll speak to you soon Thanks Russell take All the care, best, keep mate. in touch, cheers pal yeah. so Take care buddy Bye Bye mate Bye. Uh, Well I enjoyed that uh... He's all right, Mark Tibbs, and he's one of your own, isn't he? He's proper. Uh, you know, he's, he's what uh, a few of us call one of the 10% that are proper. <laughs> but I enjoyed that. A uh, bit of nostalgia talk there. Can't imagine Mark Tibbs raving. Uh, but it is what it is, isn't it? There's nothing wrong with dancing, is there? Right, so that's about it, really. What time is it now? Quarter to nine on a Monday. I've not got a video out today. I've had that much on. So we'll get this out tonight for all you Porky followers. Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment and share the video amongst your pals. All right. Peace out.